Good morning, everybody. This is Joe with the Black History Month messages for today. Um, yesterday, we left off talking about the uh, Civil Rights Memorial and the martyrs that are listed um, on that. And so uh, I'm going to continue with the list today. I think I should finish it. Um, but this is in conjunction with the theme of, of 2015 uh, Black History Month, and that is a century of black life, history, and culture. And so first up on, or next up on the list for the uh, martyrs that are on the Civil Rights Memorial would be uh, Medgar Evers, and I believe that's a name that most people should be familiar with. Um, he was the director of the NAACP, Operations in Mississippi. Um, he was leading a campaign for integration in Jackson when he was shot and killed by a sniper at his home on June 12, 1963. Next up, we have four people, you know, that are together because they were killed together. Um, and this happened on September 15th of 1963. And we had Addie Mae Collins, um, Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, and Cynthia Wesley. And they were getting ready for church services when a bomb exploded at the 16th Street Baptist Church, killing all four of the school-age girls. Um, the church had been a center for civil rights meetings and marches. And then we have Virgil Lamar Ware, and he was 13. He was riding on the handlebars of his brother's bicycle when he was fatally shot by white teenagers. The white youth had come from a segregationist rally held in the aftermath of the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. And on September 15, 1963, he was killed. Next up, we have Louise Allen. And uh, this happened on January 31st, 1964. And he witnessed the murder of civil rights worker Herbert Lee. Uh, who had endured, you know, years of threats, jailings, and harassment. And he was making final arrangements to move north on the day that he was killed. And then in Jacksonville, Florida, on March 23, 1964, we had Johnny May Chapel, and he was murdered as he, or as she, I'm sorry, walked along a roadside. Her killers were white men looking for a black person to shoot following a day of racial unrest. Then all the way up in Cleveland, Ohio, on April 7th of 1964, the Reverend Bruce Clunder, he was among civil rights activists who protest the, the, the building of a segregated school by placing their bodies in the way of the construction equipment. And he was crushed to death when a bulldozer backed over him. Then we move back to uh, Mississippi on uh, May 2nd of 1964. And we have two people. One was Henry D. and then Charles Eddie Moore. And they were killed by Klansmen who believed that the two were part of a plot to arm blacks in the area. There was no such plot, of course. Um, their bodies were found during a massive search for the missing civil rights workers, um, Cheney, Goodman, and Schwimmer. And then on June 21st of 1964 in Mississippi, James Earl Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwimmer, they were young civil rights workers. They were arrested by a deputy sheriff and then released into the hands of Klansmen who had plotted their murders. They were shot and their bodies were buried in an earthen dam. On July 11, 1964, in Colbert, Georgia, the Lieutenant Colonel Limuel Penn, he, uh, Washington, D.C., he was an educator and he was driving home from U.S. Army Reserve training when he was shot and killed by Klansmen in a passing car. And then on February 26, 1965, in Alabama, we have Jimmy Lee Jackson, who was beaten and shot by state troopers as he tried to protect his grandfather and mother from a trooper attack on civil rights marches. His death led to the Selma-Montgomery March and the eventual passage of the Voting Rights Act. And then in Selma, Alabama, on March 11th, we have the Reverend James Reeve. He was a Unitarian minister from Boston, and he was among the many white clergymen who joined the Selma marches after the attack um, by state troopers. He was beaten to death by white men while he walked down a Selma street. And uh, then we have, uh, again in Selma, on the Selma Highway of March 25th in 1965, Viola Gregg Luizo, a housewife and mother from Detroit, drove alone to Alabama to help with the Selma March after seeing televised reports of the attack um, on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. She was driving uh, marchers back to Selma from Montgomery when she was shot and killed by a Klansman in a passing car. And it is notable that she was Caucasian. In Louisiana, 
On June 2nd, 1965, we have O'Neill Moore, and he was one of two black deputies hired by white, officer, or white officials in an attempt to appease the civil rights demands. Moore and his partner, Creed Rogers, were on patrol when they were blasted with gunfire from a passing car. Moore was killed, and then Rogers was wounded. On July 18th of 1965, in Alabama, we have Willie Brewster, who was on his way home from work when he was shot and killed by white men. The men belonged to the National States Rights Party, which was a violent uh, neo-Nazi group whose members had been involved in church bombings and murders of blacks. In Alabama, once again, on August 20th, 1965, and as we can see, there's quite a bit of uh, civil rights unrest in Alabama, um, but on August 20th, we have Jonathan Daniels, and he was an Episcopal seminary student in Boston. Uh, he was Caucasian, and he had come to Alabama to help with black voter registrations in Lowndes County. He was arrested at a demonstration. He was jailed in Haynesville, Alabama, and then suddenly released. But moments after his release, he was shot to death by a deputy sheriff. In 1966, we go on to Tuskegee, Alabama, and we have Samuel Lehman Youngs. He was a student, civil rights activist, and he was fatally shot um, by a white gas station owner following an argument over segregated restrooms. Um, on January 10th, in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, we have Vernon Ferdinand Dahmer, and he was a wealthy businessman, Caucasian again, and he offered to payroll taxes for those who couldn't afford the fee required to vote. The night after a radio show broadcast um, that broadcasted Dahmer's offer to the people, his home was firebombed, and he died later of severe burns. In 1967, we have Benjamin Brown, a former rights, uh, civil rights organizer. He was watching a student protest from the sidelines when he was hit by gunshots from police who fired into the crowd. And last but not least, um, we have the great Martin Luther King, who of course was a Baptist minister, and he was the major architect of the civil rights movement. Um, you know, he led and inspired major nonviolent segregation campaigns, including those in Montgomery and in Birmingham. He won the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for peace, um, but he was assassinated as he prepared to lead a demonstration in Memphis. And that was on April 4th of 1968. So that concludes the uh, segment on the uh, Civil Rights Memorial. I will be back tomorrow with another message um, for Black History Month. Thanks for listening.